honestly, because I'm. Well, actually- I, I think I think that's the point of going and and getting your Vegas show is that people that you can stop worrying about your career at that point. <laughs> You're just like I'm good. Is it kind of like when you start wearing sweats? Yeah, I think I think a Vegas show is a lot like sweats. I'm just wearing sweats <laughs> like right now. It's like I'm wearing sweats right now. <laughs> Welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. And today I was going to ask, what is, what do you guys think of brunch? Brunch? Yeah, brunch. You know, it's not breakfast, it's not lunch, but it sucks. That's my opinion. I don't like brunch. I hate it. I I like it. I like brunch, but I generally only eat the breakfasty type of foods. And maybe if a, if a brunch has crab legs... I'm usually in. Mm. I'm Let me usually ask you this. Would you wait 45 minutes to get into a brunch restaurant? I know that that's not likely in your life right now. I don't know. I have no idea. But I know that like waiting 45 minutes to an hour to get into a brunch place is almost part of the experience. And that's well, what I'm I will. About. I will say we have some great brunch places here. Okay. We do have, we do have five star hotels here. No, of course. it is a tourist destination. So there are some great brunch places. However, I would think the waiting in line thing is what I'm talking about. There's not going to be a line. So that's what I'm talking about. 45 minutes. Why? This sounds very specific. Yeah, it's no, it's I worked at a brunch restaurant and most brunch restaurants I've tried to go to. There's usually like a half hour to an hour wait, especially on the Mm. weekends, man. It's like a whole thing. I'm just not into it. It's Mm. like I can do most of that stuff. Most of the stuff I'm probably going to order at home. Father, brunch, yay or nay? I mean, I'm orthodox, so you got to kind of be used to it. Yeah. You know, you do enough liturgies. It's like you're not getting you're not getting breakfast, <laughs> and it's a little early for lunch. So, hey. I guess mm-hmm. that's true. You know? I guess that's I, true. I can definitely say that in a previous life, I have uh, frequented the brunch restaurants that have the bottomless mimosas. Mimosas. I've, cert- I've certainly done that. Or Bellinis. If you can, if you can do a Bellini, I'd rather have a Bellini than a mimosa. What, to hey, be honest. Is it for him? What's a Bellini? A Bellini. It, well, so a mimosa is champagne and orange juice. Yes. And a Bellini is champagne and peach puree. Oh. Yes. I've never even heard of that before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now. You know, the thing with mimosas, all I can ever think about, and I don't just shows you how. I mean. No surprise to anyone how uncultured and uncouth I am, but I just keep thinking about the uh, Incredibles. That's the one, every every time I yeah. hear mimosas, I just think about the Incredibles. I just can't help it. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, that <clears throat> that was the question I came up with. So let's dive into the real stuff. Let's do it. So Smart. we are on Creed. Where are we at in the Creed? Um. True God, true God. Okay, so I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Uh, creator, oh, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages. So, true God of true God, begotten. Not light, of, made. light of light, true God of true God. Yeah, yeah, light of yeah, light. We true covered God. the light of light, true God of true begotten God. Begotten, not made of one essence with the Father. By whom all things were made. What did I so say? So we're at, so we're at, no, you did it. Okay. You said mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mimosa, mimosa, mimosa. So we're at begotten, not made of one essence with the Father by whom all things were made. Yes. Which is kind of, this, it's kind of, they're kind of related, but I, I was hoping, Father, maybe I can jump this off, start, start this off with this. Maybe this will be a nice uh, bootstrap for us, a little starting point the where the one essence three persons the i read 
which you you gave to me one of the first books you gave to me and said you got to read this during my catechism was his life is mine saint sophroni mm -hmm. and one of the most profound things that i had never ever heard before was he talks about why do why the personification which i was like oh he's really going to talk about the why here like okay and he says the persona if there was no personification if these were not persons then there could be no good or evil there could only be natural processes mm. and i was like whoa but but since we obviously have a concept of good and evil we know that there is good and evil and that can only be embodied by a person that must mean that the the person is part of god mm -hmm. I thought that was I thought that was very interesting, and I and I don't know maybe if that's a, a helpful jumping off point of because I think it's hard for people the person the persons especially the more deistic kind of agnostic yeah folks yeah yeah I I think um, it's really tough because um, the problem that a lot of people have is well there's a i think there's a couple of things i mean i think the first thing is that you know we're all working with this um kind of like radiation um backdrop this like of the force and pop culture ideas of you know we hear it all the time and if you watch tv or if you have you consume any type of media the universe told me you know the force, like all of these impersonal, and even with, you know, people, unfortunately, like you'll have maybe a lot of Christians, quote unquote, they'll have a better understanding of yoga <laughs> than they would, you know, actual Trinitarian, you know, theology. Um, so, and, and I, I mean that in a charitable sense. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to say that to put anyone down. I'm just saying that's just the kind of waters we're swimming in, you know to that background radiation. So like, I think on that level and just kind of where we're at, that's something to look at because um, this loss of meaning, and I think this is what's, um, if we can start kind of like from an even lower level and the loss of meaning, really one of the big, perp one of the big reasons for the loss of meaning is the loss of, of connection. And the loss of connection comes from an absence of knowing, you know, what personhood is and understanding where it comes from. And I hate to go there in this sense, but um, since it is the real path, you know, because I think it's, I think it'll be appropriate because I'm usually on the other side kind of pushing against this tension, but I'm actually going to lean into it a little bit. What I'm talking about is, you know, there's this thing that um, the men in the Enlightenment understood, the framers of the Constitution and the founders of this country. I mean, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due and understanding that, you know, some of these inalienable rights come from the fact that we were created in the image of God and understanding what that means. And um, I think starting there is really good, actually, because um, where it gets particularly interesting to me um, being orthodox is when we start getting into some of the mystery of it. And I think before we get into that, we should lay some, some groundwork and understand what people are really missing in that. Is, is that making sense, you know? Um, yeah, please. Because, you know, the, the, the big thing that is um, really problematic again is people approaching all of this with, um, with a skewed intention and not really looking to find God, but rather looking to find um, a construct or, or um, you know, some sort of historical, moral or social correct, you know, tribe or collective, you know, like all these, all these things. Um, and they all have their value kind of, you know, to some degree, but, they're useless when they're disconnected from the fact that, um, you know, God, God has created us in his image and what that means. And the ramifications of that are, are 
the only source of a good and just life. Because if that isn't the case, then, you know, dog eat dog, essentially, you know. This is, you know, this is the basis. I'm kind of doing a real dumbed down version of some of Father Seraphim's arguments, but I think this is important to talk about in that sense because um, one of the biggest things that people will miss out on is their prayer life becomes so vapid and non-existent sometimes because they they still have that construct of you know an impersonal thing that they're that they're praying to and then when they even get into some of the the theology of personhood it, it it flies over their head so much it's just you might as well be talking about the force if that makes sense so um i think understanding the experience of revelation that the fathers share with us um, means that we can also too experience that revelation um, through the life of the church. Now that being said, all that being said, getting to this idea of person being the revelation of God, what's the ramifications of that? It, well, the ramifications of that is when we start talking about our own deification and, and what does it mean for us to, to not simply be made in the image of God, but to be deified and to, you know, not in some, to, to some sort of like uh, symbolic sense, but actually be deified. What are the ramifications of that? That to me is an interesting conversation. So. I had a question about something that you said just a second ago. Yeah. Um, so you were talking about this. Um, I forget the word that you used, but it's taking away meaning from things. So I kind of wanted, without going too like far into the weeds, I kind of wanted to ask you, what are some of the dangers of that? So again, I'm not trying to go into a, like the weeds really quick. I just kind of wanted to stop and ask because I don't know if I had an answer in a real way because there's like that like western Christian way of like answering a question that's not satisfying at all um but and then there's like an orthodox perspective perspective of just being like well this is this and this and then you kind of like end up there mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get to is like what is the danger behind like changing the um, meaning of like man and woman like mm -hmm. again like getting too not getting too far away from the main conversation but taking away some of that meaning like taking away some of the things that like and that speaks to personhood as well mm -hmm. because i mean there is a personhood there mm -hmm. sure so. sure there's an aspect of personhood absolutely and i mean the dangers of it are um you find a good analogy uh You don't really want your plane mechanic messing around and acting like certain nuts and bolts are interchangeable that aren't. You don't you don't want your you don't want your surgeon to start, you know, capriciously, right? Capriciously thinking that, you know, certain veins or arteries or certain things just kind of like can be substituted or there, there's no real, there's no real design to them, right? You want your plane mechanic and you want your surgeon to understand the design, understand how the design works, how the design functions and why it functions, because if you don't, you'll die, right? And so the problem with that is you begin to play around with reality and the fruit of it is death. And so we're seeing primarily for a long time, actually longer than people realize, spiritual death. Now we're getting into the area of, of actual physical, like material death from these, um, these devil games of confusion and things like that, right? Um, now, part of the problem of people struggle with God and struggle, I mean, let me rephrase that, 
part of the struggle that I think that people have in regards to the spiritual life. Um, and I, I'm always fascinated with trying to, I'm always trying to figure out, you know, how do you, how do you engage the mind of a young person? Like, how do you engage the mind of, of a, you know, 17 to 23 year old to, to give them um, not some sort of moral construct, but how do you, how do you engage them to like, to get them to, to show them like, Hey man, this is life. Check this out. Right. This is life. So I think that's important because like one of the things I've been really, in, I've been really meditating on a lot lately in regards to this is, um, if people understood that, you know, sexual union between a man and a woman is an icon for the union of God in the world, you know, God in the material world and God and his, and his bride, his church, if they could understand that, I think it would change so much. I mean, hopefully first and foremost, it would change people's approach towards sex and it would, it would help some people move away from the kind of base animalistic, you know, uh, perspective that a lot of people have on it, you know? Um, because this, this understanding is, to me, it's not only profound, but it's, it's beautiful. And when you understand it, then we start getting into one of the ways that you can begin to experience, you know, the character, the personhood, the, the personality the, of God and how God is and will come to you. And, and, and you'll start seeing that, you know, God has this <laughs> personality, like God has a way of, of, of engaging and encountering you, you know? Um, and so I know for some people, this makes them very uncomfortable, but unfortunately, I mean, that to me, is kind of part of the problem because if you if you haven't yet experienced God in, in a way that is um, deeply and profoundly personal, um, I, I worry about the shelf life there, you know, because you can always find a deeper and even funner um, mystical system to follow, right? That that's part of the thing that I think is also important in regard to this this discussion about personhood is that you know um it isn't just kind of like this is the system that works for me right we're talking about this is god like we're talking about the living the living god you know well the it seems to me and i've been saying like i've been saying for a while that the woke thing and it's interesting because a lot of these people who i thought were materialist people like james Lindsay and other commentators who've been talking about the wokes for a long time are now starting to talk about them in more religious and spiritual terms and say, mm -hmm. no, it's that they're, they're a religion. It's mm -hmm. a church. Mm -hmm. Like this is actually, it's a mystical system that these people are using and they do. So obviously so much of what they play around with is the concept of personhood. Mm -hmm. And I, it's interesting when you said, you know, you want the surgeon to, or the plane mechanic to know the design to recognize the design but it's also they didn't design it like the surgeon didn't design the body right. the mechanics the the airplane was not designed by the mechanic it was he he learned the design right. he's a mechanic he's not a he, he's not an aerospace engineer right he's not the one who, who actually designed the plane and it's interesting because as it, it was making me think as you were saying that that of course that seems so obvious but then why do we have this problem with the wokes who want to redesign, who, who want to reimagine the design even so far that they're going to create a metaverse mm -hmm. where people can go and live out and perceive that the world is actually the design that they want. And as far as I can tell, it has something to do like tracing it back. And again, thanks to James Lindsay for a lot of this he, he's he's wrong in some of his things that he says but in terms of his history he's been very informative of like where do these thoughts come from and it seems to come from this i this this idea of it's a, it's a it's it, it's a, almost a denial of god but again i hear this from atheists too that it's like 
if God, why would God design this world of suffering? So either one, your belief about the design is wrong, mm -hmm. or two, this is an evil God. Mm -hmm. And in either case, I'm not going to pay attention to it. And I'm going to redesign this thing. I'm going to play mental gymnastics mm -hmm. and redesign this. And then you're going to have to take on my design. Right. Well, it's interesting to me because... There's, there's just something that I'm waking up more and more to, and, I, and maybe it is, I have to acknowledge I live in a bubble, I guess, but I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm just going to embrace it, you know? I mean, I'm um, kind of in that bubble, and it's kind of cool in here, so I'm all right with it. Um, but, but the thing is, is that um, I'm becoming more and more convinced that there's more and more <clears throat> of the movers and shakers that they actually really kind of get it. Um, then I, I, it's just, I, I'm getting more and more, um, I, I'm just getting a greater sense of it. And, and here's what I, here's what I mean. Um, you know, there's that metaverse commercial, the one with like the tiger and, um, it's like, it's this really weird commercial. Is it a zoo thing? They're Is like it, at a zoo. They're like in a museum. Museum like and the tiger painting. comes alive. The tiger comes alive and you're like these teenage kids and then they're in it you know and there's all this crazy stuff in there and there's this <laughs> it's wild it's wild um and and what i'm getting at is not too far from what we talked what we talked about a couple episodes ago but um there's there's a map that that a lot of these people have and it's and it's the map of their god and it's it's the map of their tradition and the map the <laughs> i don't even, i'm not even i shouldn't even use the word map it's the um i mean it's their understanding of, of their god right and um make no mistake they have and the way that we look to the fathers right this is this is the thing we look to the fathers because the fathers have, ex have had experience. They've encountered the revelation. And through experience, revelation has been given to them, you know, via purification, which has led to their illumination of their minds. And they've experienced, you know, the, the, the energies of God, the uncreated energies of God. And so they've given us words and, and expressions of an uncreated nature, meaning they aren't born out of speculation. That challenges everything that's happening today. Whether it's the, the fluidity of gender, whether it is, you know, the employment of various victim narratives, like whatever the thing is, it's all in one way or another looking to undermine the, the bedrock of truth that we stand upon. And, and what I mean by the bedrock of truth, I'm not even just talking about the scriptures. I'm not even talking about our dogma. I'm talking about the patristic mm -hmm. understanding that you can experience God and that that experience is one of revelation and that that God that is revealed is person, right? So if if that's the case and if and if and I and if you need to undermine that, then I think what better way than to really like, instead of hitting it head on, right? Just start playing around with, you know, all the periphery stuff, start playing around with people's perception of things, start playing around in such a way to disorientate people. And the reason why I say that is because it's this, um, it plays into these things that we are already left weakened by. Weakened by. So in other words, People, because where of our society is at, we have no concept of, you know, this kind of dispassionate approach of, of learning to purify ourselves. Like, like all that stuff, all the discipline that early people had, like we don't have it, right? And so because since we don't have it, we are just given over to whatever fancy and taste we have. And that sets you up to be, you know, perfectly molded and shaped by the God of this world, small g. And the God of this world is, has no problem with people. He doesn't care whether people know him or not. 
the God of this world doesn't care about truth, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't care about human life. So therefore, the, the deception, you know, we talked about light last time, but this deception of light, this deceptive light, it's really key because there is that knowledge or there is that, that, that tempting with knowledge that everyone's being given right now, right? All you got to do is, you know, all so much that's coming out right now, it's like, well, let me do the, the deep symbolic dive of it. What's the esoteric knowledge? It's just like, it's all, it, I'm almost starting to think it's, um, it's being held out there even more and more intentional, not just to kind of signal to other people, but to disorientate people, to get people to really, um, the enemy knows that, that we, in, we, we innately thirst for truth and truth is a person, we innately are thirsting for God. We want to be, we, we want to feel the potential that only God can fill us with, right? But since we are so <laughs> deluded, um, he'll just as easily give us a sense of, I can make you a God. I mean, this is the lie of Eve, right? I can, I can make you a God. I can, I can give you the means to, to form and shape yourself as you wish, you know? And isn't this being merciful? Isn't this what it means to be good? Isn't this like true freedom, you know? Um, and so his, that voice, that, that wicked deceptive voice is um, so strong right now. And it's, it, that's a person too, you know? Um, there's the, there's, it's interesting father, because you, you say this thing about this, this temptation of knowledge that's being held out there. And it's funny because just a couple of days ago, I was noticing that my YouTube feed had started feeding me all of these, weirdly enough, like, and of course you look at one and then it's going to feed you the rest, but it, it was very, let's say kind of academic, mm -hmm. uh, not meant to be, not meant to look conspiracy theory theory mm -hmm. style, not meant to look David Icke, really like kind of academic mm -hmm. history, but I watched a little bit and I was like, oh no, no, this is like, this is give, giving an esoteric to talking about Atlantis and some mm -hmm. of these other things. And I was like, mm. and then I started to get, I, I, I realized it started to make me uncomfortable because I said, oh, before orthodoxy, like if you would have caught me with these, let's say three, four years ago, mm -hmm. I would have been like, oh, this is very interesting. Like, mm -hmm. and I know some of the history that they were talking about and whatever. And I mean, I even did a podcast back in the day, Destination Unknown with my buddy, Dave, and we would talk about a lot of these things, but there was something about it when I encountered it now where I said, oh, this is, this is deception. Mm -hmm. Like one, there's no way that this individual could know any of this stuff is true. And this person is talking in a very academic way and saying, oh, I'm an anthropologist and all of this, like, oh, like this is definitely true in this very academic way. Mm -hmm. And I, and I thought to myself, like, yeah, it, it leaves you feeling like you've got a handle on things. Okay. It leaves yeah. you feeling like, oh, I know what's going on in the world. This is the answer. This is what's going on in the world. But if you as I stepped back, I was like, if I really believed that that was reality, things would be real messed up for me right now. Mm -hmm. If I, if I actually acted upon this mm -hmm. belief mm -hmm. and it's so, and, and, and of course, because there's no experience, but mm -hmm. it feels very much like, Ooh, I've been let in on the, mm -hmm. let in on the secret knowledge. It's just, just like a Masonic thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've been led into the secret society. Now I have the secret knowledge and oh, I know all about the powerful. And it's like, really, if, if, the, if this was the real story of the powerful, do you think that you would be able to like, that, that this would be out, that you would have any of this information? And so I think that that's, and it, and it would, and the people I know who are far into that, who really believe that they've got the answers in that regard are so blind to even the capability of having an experience of Christ. Yeah, I mean, what's really scary is that um, so for us, right, the eschaton, the, the eschatological experience, the experience of like the future age, like it's not even, that's not even the right way to say it because you experience eschaton now. Like 
you're supposed we're if if you're in Christ, truly you're you will begin to experience eschaton now, the future age now. And the reason why I bring that up is because for a lot of people, what they what they're missing out on is they've been given again these false constructs of what it means to be in Christ, a Christian, Orthodox, blah, blah, blah. And because they don't know what they're looking for, right? It leaves them in this place of still looking, right? Instead of experiencing. And this is really important because so many people get deceived in thinking, I need something more. This isn't, this isn't um, enough, you know? Like, oh, that's fine. I can be a Christian, but I still need to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and the problem with that is, is that X, Y, and Z leads you further and further away from the source of life, which is the means by which you begin to encounter those things. That you, it's, it's the great tragedy. You begin to leave those things which you're so desperately desiring, but you don't realize it, right? So the, the, the sense of, you know, whatever it's going to be that, that people are deceived by, what they don't realize is that its end is destruction, right? And, and it sounds really dramatic, but um, you can't, a person can't live in pursuit of self without a cost. You can have a family, quote unquote, but we've all, if not already been a part of a family, we've known families that have, that have just been absolutely eaten from the inside out by one of the family members just pursuing life, you know, as if they are the center, right? The dad that's- 100%. You, you, see, you see what I'm saying? Like that is, that is the fruit of the God of this world. Like that's, I mean, period. I mean, I, I don't know how, I mean, to me, it's, it's just very simple. So because of that, you know, we, we're left with a culture, quote unquote, now that that's all it can give us is more death, right? Like to the point where even the, the quote unquote religious, quote unquote Christian aspects that this culture produces, they just bring death. Like, We've come to this place from my perspective that all the, you can see now how everything is so tainted. Everything has been, has been you know, tainted and, and distorted. And it's a great time, I think, because I think this is where a lot of people are starting to wake up as they realize, oh, I thought I was, I thought I was on this good path. And I have realized I'm not on this good path. You know, I thought I was pursuing uh, Christ. I thought I was pursuing a good life, right? But really, I've just been pursuing myself, or I've been pursuing something else. And it brings into this place where they are truly broken and needing something. And it's at that point where, you know, like uh, I think it's Elder Joseph, St. Joseph, who says, at the end of our endurance, then grace comes. It's like, then you're in this place where you want to experience the Christ that is the only begotten. You know, you want, you, you want to really understand and go like, no, I don't need anybody else's like I need opinion or perspective on like, I want to know the real deal. And I say all that to get back to what, we're, what I was saying about the fathers. This, this is the thing about something like the creed and something of like patristic tradition a spiritual tradition, a liturgical tradition, a tradition that doesn't just give you something because it's old or, or esoteric, but because it works. And because it, it, it's evidenced by men and women who are transformed, um, who didn't just live centuries ago, but who have been with us now, St. Porfirios, St. Paisios, St. Sophroni, you know, um, there's contemporary elders, uh, and, and, and monastics and such who are holy now, you know, who you can hear from them that their words are of God. They're not of a created or speculative nature, right? You hear them, you're like, that's from God, right? That, that isn't something that's just coming from, 
somebody's kind of Frankenstein approach to it, right? That's what people need. You know, they, they need to experience something that is authentically of God. And I think more than just, because here's the thing, the context of the creed and that portion of it is, again, historically, you know, the, what would seem to be redundant is really trying to emphasize something that was, I mean, that was the source of attack. And, we ha and you know, the Gnostics and all the various um, cults that were coming in, the Aryans, I mean, it was, it was absolutely necessary because the church, she's not, um, she's not proactive in that sense. She responds, right? She responds and she responds in such a way to say, okay, well, this is where, this is where you're at, humanity or whatever. Um, this is, this is the true response to that. Here, here is where the error is. Okay, boom, right? Um, and so in the same way, and I'm just being careful here, because I'm not saying we need a new revelation at all from the church. What I'm trying to say though is that this problem that we are having now, this kind of zenith that we're heading into of a long-standing problem that's been building up, the church is going to respond soon at some point. I just because things are things are at such a. I think everyone will agree. We're well. I would like to think everyone will agree that we're at a time when. You know, you can't just throw. Well, there's nothing new under the sun anymore. There's some new. There's some new stuff <laughs> under the sun that's happening right now. Yeah. And, and the church is going to respond to this, but she's not going to respond in a way that is that is going to be out of left field. Those of us, the the way that you'll know it's the church, is by knowing what the fathers say. It's the same way you'll. That's the same way of discerning the antichrist. Right. Those who are going to be deceived by the antichrist are going to be those who don't know the fathers, right? Because it's not just knowing the fathers in regards of the, the kind of text that were written, but that lived experience, right? Begotten, right? That, I mean, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's of, right? The Christ is begotten of the father. He's of the fight. I mean, he, he's of the father, he's God, right? Not it's, and so in the same sense, the truth that we will need to carry us through, it isn't gonna be a new revelation like, whoa, this is a whole new, that, that's what the antichrist is gonna bring. This is the new revelation. You guys knew something was wrong. You guys knew that this couldn't be right. And you were right, you've been waiting for me, here I am. And people are gonna lap it up, right? That's, do you guys follow what I'm saying? This. No, you got to where I wanted to talk about because yeah. I, I kind of actually wanted to ask again, not to get too into the weeds. What's the difference between, because this is kind of cutting to what we were saying about the Aryans, but what's the difference between created and begotten? So created, right? Um, begotten is, is, is from, of. The best way for me to explain it in, in, in a proper context and, or in this context is it's the difference between um, <laughs> is the difference between my son versus me making, you know, some sort of synthoid. Okay. <laughs> sure. it, it, does that make sense? Uh, you, you create, you making a robot or something. Yeah. Yeah. Synthoid, yeah. you know, yeah. like, like, you know, we're getting to a point like uh, what's that abomination's name? Sophia is that is that its name? You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, the the thing that can talk, turn its head. They take it to the UN conferences and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I yeah, think that it's abomination. Sophia, yeah, yeah, like that thing is that's created. You know what I mean? So um, like it would be like, in in the way that I the heat I bring to this show would be like if Hank Pym had a son versus Ultron. So yeah. like he created yeah. Ultron. Yeah. But like his son would be begotten of Hank Pym. Yeah. 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 And that's and that obviously historically and now, right? Because when I say historically, it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter now. But that had everything to do with the fact that if Christ isn't God, and if he isn't of the Father as as he claimed, right, then we have no salvation. 
clearly, right? Because you, whatever is, um, whatever is assumed is saved, right? What in Christ assumes our, our, our humanity, but he can do that because he's fully God, right? So this is, this is the thing that's, it's just of the utmost importance to us, obviously. But I think for us also in this age, there's another aspect to it that we're, we're starting to see, which is we are entering in the time of, we're entering the time of antichrist, okay? And there's a whole level there which makes people uncomfortable because I, I'm not even gonna go there right now, we can maybe. I'm not going there about capital T, capital A, antichrist, like yeah, the man, right? Yeah. I'm talking about in the sense of absolute deception and forgery, the level of forgery and, and fraud that's being presented. To displace and, Christ and, dis, and uh, in an attempt to displace in an attempt to the, the king not against, from his throne. Not against, but but to be in the place of. It's it's insane. It's insane. And it's everything from the metaverse and trying to present a world according to, you know, quote unquote our image, right? How we would like it. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun, quote unquote tagline, right? A world that's devoid of suffering, devoid of pain, a world that's devoid of any um, order that isn't contingent upon taste and passion, right? Isn't that what Jesus would bring us? Wouldn't Jesus bring us a, or wouldn't the, wouldn't the real God bring us a world where love is love and whatever the new creed is, right? This- That's straight, that's straight, out, straight out of the matrix, right? Straight, that when when uh, Smith is interrogating, Morpheus, and he says, the first matrix that we tried to make was we gave everything. Right. It's crazy that oh, we're like, we're going to do that. the metaverse. And yet Smith tells Morpheus that human beings could not survive in a, a world that where everything was what they wanted, mm -hmm. that it could, we, we, it's, it was no good for them. They just fell apart and just died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yet we're going to go ahead and do it. Yeah. And so I just want to say this real quick because, um, I mean, I, forgive me. I, I'm, I'm the only thing I, I feel like I, it's going to be important to say right now is the missing component is love. And, and when you begin to really understand that that's the thing, because the reason why on a philosophical level, what Smith says is correct is because the, well, this is one of the problems with the matrix that people don't actually catch because a lot of us, and it's good, I use it all the time, obviously, we, when we all use it as this kind of, you know, kind of like cipher to really like unpack things. But you always have to understand there's some, there's some presuppositions that are running through there, which are problematic for us. One of the first one is that issue there and what's, what's devoid is, is love, right? That argument of, Agent Smith is, you know, he's saying like this first matrix. Well, the reason why it didn't work isn't because of some sort of problem in, in our design of how we were made. The problem is the fall, right? It's not accounting for that, right? And it's not accounting of there will be a perfect world. And in fact, you know, I've had tastes of it. The problem but is I can't, the problem is I can't sustain it, right? I can't sustain it like and that the only way it's going to be sustained is when his kingdom comes and it will come there will be a time when it will be it it, it will no longer we will no longer have to strive to maintain it it will no it won't simply be these flashes of paradise right history will still go on but it's going to go on in paradise and it's going to be transfigured and it's going to be different it's going to be it's going to be imbued with love and the people, the saints, those who will inhabit that kingdom are gonna be free people who have finally learned and, and fully walked into their power to love and to understand what love is. Because let me just unpack this just so no one thinks that I'm, you know, twirling, you know, daisies and just being hippy dippy. This is also the problem with pain is that People who don't know love, they don't understand. 
pain or suffering. If you take out the, if you take out the, the kind of like juvenile um, definitions or, 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 or perspectives on pain and suffering, you'll find something really profound, right? How is it that you have someone like St. Porfirios who is like, oh, I thank the Lord for all the many illnesses he gave me. How do you explain that, right? Well, you explain it because the saints are those who are committed to the life in Christ. That's the halo around the saint, right? It's the wedding ring, if you will, being united to God. And they begin to understand that everything God has given us is good. They begin to even understand that in the life of Christ, even quote unquote pain and quote unquote suffering becomes an expression of love. And this is the big mystery about the fires of hell, you know, the fires of hell being uncreated, right? This is, this is one of the, the big battles that we have with the West is like understanding like, no, 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 like the fires, those fires are uncreated. It's, it's, it's the icon of the judgment, the fire that's flowing from the throne, right? That's, it's uncreated. That, that fire, that love, our gods are consuming fire. That same fire illumines and it burns at the same time. And so all this is important because we are always in pursuit of God's essence. We will never know it. We'll never know it, but we're in pursuit of it. We're, 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 we're hunting down. We're looking to go deeper and deeper and deeper and pursuing this, this mysterious, ravenous love that he has for us. And we are growing in, in a ravenous love for him. And what that, what that means is even something like pain begins to reveal the mystery of love. And so I say that because this is the type of thing that people begin to miss, right? And this is where, you know, I'm all about the attrition rate being really low. I want, I, 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 my hope is that people who are approaching the church for the first time who are coming from various philosophical, political, socio, sociological kind of backgrounds, whatever, that they kind of get some of what I'm trying to say here because I don't want them just kind of coming for the easy take of like, this is the right historical framework or this is the right moral system because it's way deeper than that. It's way deeper than that. Father, I had a question. I would be remiss if we just glossed over uh, for some of our more uh, Western minded uh, listeners or watchers or whatever. I actually just, because this was one of the first things that definitely was a startling contrast to what I had been taught. You're going to do heaven and hell right now? The orthodox view of heaven and hell? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, That's If we haven't done that yet, we got to do that. Yeah. So that that was shocking to me. It reframed a bunch of Christianity in my brain. So, yeah. If you could just give like a little, just a little rundown of that real quick. Yeah. I mean, one of the problems that everyone has growing up here is like, People who have rejected God, one of the big arguments that they'll, they'll grab onto is like, well, if God's love, how can he send people to hell, right? And what kind of God is that? This sounds like more like a monster to me, you know? And there's lots of ways to approach it. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's understanding that, um, you know, God loves everyone. And just like I was saying, the the fires of hell are the love of God, you know? and the, the, the process in which, you know, the analogy I've, I've always given is um, I, my, you know, my, my six-year-old daughter's having a nightmare, right? And I go in and she's calling out for her dad. I go into the room, I turn the light on, right? Well, what does the light do for her? You know, she sees me, she, the, the shadows are, are, are banished away. The light brings her comfort because she can see, right? She can see now. Well, I've lived in places, unfortunately, where I've had roaches, you know? And what happens if you've ever had roaches, you know what happens when you run, you're in the kitchen at night, you turn the light on, what happens? The roaches scatter, right? Is the light different? No, it's the same light. 
the same light that comforted your daughter is the same light that caused the roaches to scatter, right? And so that begins to really flesh out why our spiritual tradition is the way it is, because, you know, as, as I'm off to say, orthodoxy is about learning not to flinch. You begin to learn to embrace the light. So those who have spent their life here, not simply acclimating, but learning to embrace the light, right? True light of true light, right? The actual light that comes from the source of light, right? Like the fathers, the fathers saw the light in the light through the light, right? The fathers, the, 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 the fathers of the church, the, the men who, and women who have experienced being the, the, the life of God being in them, they saw if the father is light, God is light. Well, they, they experience that light by being in the light of the Holy Spirit. And in being in the light of the Holy Spirit, they, they see through the light of Christ, the Father, because the, Christ reveals the Father to us. If you've seen Christ, you've seen the Father, right? So all that being said, that light and, and your life of prayer, your life of obedience, your life of learning hierarchy, that's the big thing about learning hierarchy, right? You learn humility isn't about you just groveling because God's some petty tyrant. It's because... God is. God can't, God can't change himself for you to make you feel better. This, you, you know what I'm saying? So you need, to, you need to learn that there are forces and others above you. You need to learn to orientate and interact with holiness and with, with holiness, right? That's what hierarchy teaches you, right? On a real fundamental level, hierarchy teaches you that. So this light, as you, as you learn to acclimate it, become acclimated to it, you learn to embrace it and love it, you begin to learn things like pain isn't bad. It's unpleasant, but it's not bad. It's unpleasant, but it's beneficial in the light of Christ because it's there to purify you. It's there to correct you, to cause you to grow. But everyone else who's following the God of this world, right? And Lord, have mercy on these people. I Sometimes my heart breaks so much for people who are caught in the confusion because I can't even imagine that, that, that type of hellish existence of being so spiritually emaciated that you can't handle truth on a fundamental level of your gender. Like, how maddening. Like the most basic fundamental principles of reality you can't even handle, right? And, and, and living in a world which nurtures that insanity within you, right? That is a hellish experience, right? And that hellish experience is because there is a fundamental truth that they're fighting against. It's a light that they're not wanting to, to look at. That's, that's that experience of hell now. Just in the same way, when I find wisdom and humility and, 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 and I grow in courage and I, and I grow in joy and enduring sufferings, when I learn to embrace the, the pain of having to humble myself in front of my wife and say, you know what? You're right. I was being arrogant. I was this and that. Authentically authentically when i learn to authentically repent and apologize that isn't pleasant but it's good right mm -hmm. that's an experience of god that's an experience of that kingdom that's the experience of that of that fire and that light that that purifies but on the other end and that's what the whole world is running from and, and to me the whole religion of woke especially is all about trying to avoid that light that fire. And so what they're giving them, it's prepping people for hell. It's giving them this, this taste of hell. Father, I had this interesting experience. It was, it was notable. You, you, you brought this up about the, the humbling. And I will say I have, I have not been 
in my life someone who has practiced a whole lot of humility. Let's just put it like that. Not for humility's sake, right? If, if, if you found me being humble, there was usually an ulterior motive. But in, in terms of, my, in terms of, this was just a notable thing that happened to me this, this week. It's happened to me a few times, but this time I was really, you know, I've been listening a lot more like in prayer. I, I've, I've always listened, but I've really now been, been focusing and, and listening. And sometimes things are, are things that were subtle things. Now I recognize a lot more, but a situation had come up, just an interaction that I had had with somebody, uh, a friend where, and it was sort of apropos of nothing and not a big deal where um, just a little, a little back and forth of something where, I don't know, maybe my pride got tinged or something that this individual had said. I reacted in a certain way, justifying myself or whatever. And I think this other person recognized it. It's like, oh, I'm not, not trying to call you out or whatever. And that was fine. And usually for me, I'd, I'd be able to rationalize in my head, oh, this person was wrong, whatever. I caught myself in, in prayer, could not. And it, was, it had happened like two days before. Mm -hmm. This one morning, I'm in prayer and could not. This was like, ah. <laughs> on me and I was like stop stop and, it, and I was like and I was sitting there and I'm praying and I'm like trying to rash and I'm like trying to throw the rationalizations at it and I'm like no 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 it's not it's not a big deal and, I go, and by the end I was like <laughs> really seriously and then it was like hey man you know just wanted to tell you like thank thank you for that anyway perhaps I had been sloppy or imprecise about whatever this thing was and just wanted to let you know like I appreciate you making that comment like I'll, I'll keep it in mind. What, and then it was gone. Mm -hmm. And I just noticed like, whoa. Like, and it, wasn't, it, it wasn't something planned or anything. It was just like truly in my heart mm -hmm. to where I was like, no, nah, dude, you were wrong. You better can fix I, can it. I, can I stop you real quick though? Just yeah. to, I don't want to lose an important part. Please. This is what's so tragic. You've learned now, like you've had this experience. You, you, you especially right now, you, you, it's fresh enough for you to remember what your life was like before the church. Yeah. And what it was like to not be able to get out of that cycle. Yeah. Like you weren't even aware of that whole process at one point in time. Or you would just drink it away or do you, you see what I'm saying? And so you definitely drink it away. You know what I mean? Which, which uh, the, fa the fast is going to prevent that right now. So I knew right. that wasn't an option. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, whatever, but it's just like, you're stuck in it. But now you have this experience. And that's why I was saying earlier, like, cause it's important for me that people hear what I'm saying and not just be like, I I'm giving some flowery mystical talk. Like what you just described, that's that flash of paradise that I'm talking about. Of being able to say, you know what? Yeah. I was, I was wrong. And then you're liberated. Ugh. And that, that's, that's what that looks like. And if you're, if, and if whoever's listening, if you're honest with yourself, you may not know what I'm talking about in regards to being able to just say, like, acknowledge it and let it go and be liberated. You may not know it, but you definitely know the other side. You know, that side of just being in your own feedback loop and getting angrier and angrier and angrier or justifying more, or doubling down more, or running away more, whatever it is, denial, anger, justification, whatever it is, you know what it means to be locked in there. Probably to the point where you've lost relationships over it. Well, the that's, whole world knows it now. The whole world knows it. Because that's the story of the last two right. years, isn't it? And, the and doubling down and justification. And what I want to say is that's, that is that very real taste of hell now that's the very real taste of hell now right because really what you're doubling down against is the light is the truth that same doubling down and light and truth that you're just like no 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 guess what that's god that that's that's God. So, what, so when we Orthodox, we pray God is ever a present to fill us to all things. You know, some people, they want to get that twisted. You got some, you got some ortho yogis who are running around trying to do both and like, no, nah, no. Nah, and they turn into this pantheistic thing. No, man. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is 
convicting the whole world of sin, right? But that indwelling, that only comes from those who have been received. And those who have been received, they get this indwelling and they're able to be liberated. And that liberation, if they participate, that flash of heaven, it gets a little bit longer each year they try. It's a little bit longer. They get to sustain the grace a little bit more. That taste of heaven become it, it not become it is real, right? And our tradition teaches us how to sustain it a little bit longer. We can't, none of us can hold it, but you can learn to sustain it. That's what I'm talking right. about because that's heaven. Well, how different would the world be if everybody was doing that? Like that's what just came to me when you said like because I hadn't even thought about it. It's like it's the difference between the utopia and the dystopia. Mm-hmm. It's like the utopia is when if somebody is off or wrong or missing the mark, sinning, whatever, that they as quickly as possible are like, oh, no, my bad. Mm-hmm. Sorry, y'all. Let's fix this and move forward. Like, let's mm-hmm. let's all do it. And the, the and the dystopia is I'm not wrong. It's the dystopia mm-hmm. is Trump. Mm-hmm. Right. Where you just know from the jump. Don't even bring it up because he's not going to acknowledge the fact that he was wrong. It doesn't matter. He's going to double, triple, quadruple down and things just get worse and worse. Right. Right. I I wanted to talk really something um, that I think I could probably benefit from talking about. So we're going to talk about that. Um, But uh, father said something really important just a second ago. And I'm, I just got to say that whole resignation, just letting it out one of the things just acknowledging the it's like one of my absolute favorite feelings in the entire world and I even probably do it unnecessarily sometimes like apologize to people like I'm not saying that this is a good thing I'm saying that like I chase it I'm I'm an addict I chase that high all the time of like just like so I have like this thing like called the gurgly phase of like when I've just been beaten down and like some of my most peace comes at times when I'm just like, like I was driving to liturgy the other day and I was like thinking to myself, um, man, like I'm kind of an idiot. And I was like, but it's okay. Cause God doesn't God, you know, God loves me anyway. You know, like God loves this idiot anyway. Um, and it stinks because with that piece, you know, it comes blah, 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 it comes continuing to move forward. But what I wanted to talk about, because I think is really important, is I beat myself up a lot uh, because I get those touches and I'm not able to sustain them. I'm like, I, I really fall into this place of like, I get really low down and like I'm in this place to just be like, what I, you know, beating my chest, blah, 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 like just like not doing well. And then like, life moves forward, things start happening. And then I lose that. And then I start really beating myself up for that. And I kind of wanted to know father, if there was like a little bit of honey for the soul about that, because I know that like, I really struggle with not the emotion, but that state of just remaining low, because it's my natural temptation to just be like, okay, well then let's go listen to some loud music or let's go. So, I mean, the, the long and short of it is that's pride all right all right that's it's it's your pride still and people don't what i think i should be doing better or something like that right right like 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 you think that you should be doing better because you think that you are better you know and and it's it's simply pride depression comes from pride actually any type of that makes a lot of sense yeah depression depression would be based that would would come from out of of course because you're like i deserve better than this right that's exactly it. it's still centered in self and so what people conflate because I, I i know as well people would conflate what they would read in our hymnography or our prayers or our hagiography in the lives of the saints and, and how they're just like man you know but the saints are never you know humility isn't thinking less of yourself it's thinking less often mm-hmm. of yourself mm-hmm. and so this this it's still an obsession of self it's still like you're still at the center of the thing this whole thing is wrong and bad and i've lost this and that because i've done blah 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 right but that's not the same thing as the recognition 
and the honest self-accusation that the church calls us to reflect upon, right? Because one has to do with actual sin, with an actual weakness or an actual misgiving or, or simple humility. Let me give you an example. Right? This, is, this is a story everyone's probably, well, not everyone. <laughs> Some people have heard, but my first introduction to this was I was uh, an inquirer still, wasn't even baptized yet. I think as a catechumen maybe. And I was uh, used to go to this men's group and you know we'd read you know books and have beer or whatever around a fire, read Orthodox books, whatever. And I had, um, had to discipline my oldest you know son at the time who was like like seven or six or something like that. And I just I lost my temper. It wasn't it wasn't like a pure discipline. It was like I was mad at him, whatever. I was just bummed out by you know. I was too harsh on them, you know? So I showed up at this men's meeting, just super bummed out and feeling sorry for myself. And like, I can't believe I did this. And, you know, it went too hard on my son, blah, blah, blah. And so a um, uh, gentleman who was there, he's, he's, he's a priest now, but at the time he was a deacon. You know, his bedside manner, never the best, but thank God, you know, love it. And um, he was like, you know, what's wrong with you, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah. I, you know, my son, blah, 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 and I went in too hard on him, blah, blah, and he's like, why aren't you arrogant? <laughs> Thinking that you were going to be some perfect dad who was going to, like, know how to, you know, raise your child the right way. And it, he wasn't being sarcastic. He was being, like, really serious. They, just, they took me back. I was like, whoa. You know what I mean? Because what I was wanting was that, like, oh, hey, man, don't go, don't feel bad. You know, I was wanting that kind of sympathy. And St. Paisios, he's like, hey, you know, you seek the consolation of man, you won't receive the consolation of God. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, I would have never said that. I would have said like, no, I'm just really, I'm lamenting like the way it was harsh on my son, blah, blah, blah. But the reality was I was wanting that. I was wanting that, hey, it's okay, man, blah, 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 you know? And ultimately it was still about myself. I was more concerned of how bad I felt about what I did I was more concerned about how I failed and, and, and how I saw myself than actually my son. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's, it's still pride, right? And, and that's why when you get this, it's not easy. But once you get this, this is, this is the way to really ride the wave longer is when you start to really impact that reality of like, accusing yourself in the right way and being like you know what nah like this is my fault somehow and not like a self-pity thing if it falls into self-pity and you yeah. start feeling like depressed you you're off you no you're wrong yeah. it's pride somehow somewhere because real humility and real self-accusation like the church teaches it never brings you to depression or despondency ever it's almost like it's almost like yeah, I can see that. Like, that's how I view a lot of my, it's like when I, like sometimes when I'm accused or whatever, I'm just like, yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know, okay, cool. Like not despondency, not like making a huge deal of it. It's like, oh, well, you really wanted this thing to happen this way so that you could get your way. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I can see that. Like, yeah, that's probably true. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll work on that from now on. And, Instead and, of like and, the lament. And that's a key. That's a key thing because what happens is the light shines on you, right? And let's not look at the light shining on you as like, again, like flowers, but like you, it's revealed. You can you're see- exposed. You're, you're exposed. exposed, right? And you can either choose to embrace that, which is, that's why you go like, yeah, okay, cool. And then there's a release and even to some degree growth because you, you now see yourself in a clear, honest light. Like this whole thing, is a humility is also about seeing yourself accurately. Yeah. That that's another piece of this, right? And just de despondency, depression, all that stuff is a refusal of humility because it's a refusal to, to see yourself accurately. Because even this whole thing, I'm just going off on it because I suffered from this depression from from depression for a long time. And you know, God has done a, a lot of work on me to really get through this. And like this reality of even like, no one has problems like I do. 
<laughs> no one has this unique reality that I must experience there. and suffer through. Been there. You know what yeah. I mean? Get out of here, man. That that <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. It's so I mean, and that and that's the thing, like. But isn't that so much of what's happening right now? No, 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 no. It's all of it. That's it's all, all of that's it. happening right yeah, now. It's all of it. Yeah. That's all that's happening right now. I mean, isn't that why the term snowflake is what it is? Yeah. And I mean, like, how often do you hear I uh, the speaking as a person who blah, 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 mm -hmm. like speaking as a person who's experienced uh, discrimination up due to my autism or something like that, mm -hmm. like some some term that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I was with I was with a good brother and his family the other night. And I, I hadn't seen this before. He was showing me some CIA promotional video with like. Isn't uh, it a, was it a blind? Is it a blind woman? They're doing all kind of disabled. And yeah, weird. yeah. No, it was a, this one was just like some Hispanic lady who's like, I'm a woman of color. And I saw. Oh, yeah, I've from, seen that one. <laughs> I suffer from like some sort of slight caffeinated anxiety disorder or something. I don't, I don't know what it was like listing all these things, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, it was somebody's critique of it. They showed a Russian recruiting film for the army or something like that. And then they showed like this other, this US one, which was like animated and it had like this a woman and she's talking about her two moms and this stuff. It's just like, First of all, what does this got to do with the with the military? What does this got to do with the army? Second of all, it's like this in it, and see, and this is the thing. It's not even like see, this is this is the problem with some some of the stuff we've talked early on uh, on the royal path here about like those people who unfortunately are really twisted up. Where it's like, no, isn't that the true Christian expression in regards of embracing weakness and like victimhood i'm like no 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 that's what that is is just pathology that's just <laughs> like, yeah. that's not yeah yes <laughs> you know what i mean that's just <laughs> yeah well they're looking for it's it, well it's I, and i think it's shown if the last if if since 2020 hasn't been a prime example that if you can get people this broken if you can just break them and then you can basically throw the identity that you want them to have, you can like sneak it into the whole narrative because it's like, why is the fact that you're going to, that you are going to inject yourself with things and that you believe that people who don't want to inject themselves with things made by criminal organizations, like avowed criminal organizations that have been put up on criminal charges that have had to settle cases and all of this for criminal charges, I don't that know that what you're that, talking about, but. that that is going to that that is somehow going to be linked with your uh gender pronouns that like because you have these other pronouns and because i don't want to inject myself with pharmaceutical substances but i don't want to inject myself with the woke poke that i'm against you and your gender pronouns because mm -hmm. someone has figured out how to in, how to insert that mm -hmm into your identity and it's and it's so accepted it's like so re everybody's like oh yeah, yeah yeah like not to rehash it too much but that tweet that father shared with us cyprian of that like you are powerless before the vaccine it, before that it was you were homophobic transphobic Tra trumpist racist trumpist and uh, somehow all of that has become synonymous mm -hmm. with um with the whole wokey you know with the with mm -hmm. the, the thing the jab or whatever so like how does that how did that how did that and, well then and uh, and climate change and climate change that's and climate right. change well, which is that? like what does that have to do with what do these have to do with each other i mean how is it not that, how is science not your god now like how is it well, that maybe that's it maybe that's it that it's because the, it's the god of this world is what it i is. have it's all a part of the god of this world I've talked about this at length with my wife and I won't go off and on about it, but uh, it's this whole, how are you swallowing everything whole? Just like not even chewing it. They're just like ramming it down your throat of how did all that stuff become? And it's like, well, 
you have you're kind of all in with science now aren't you like you've laid down you've bet you put everything you have into the middle it has to be science because if there is a god then he's not as important as this or they whatever this they're saying they don't care about any of this stuff so we should all just vaccinate and all just be whoever so as long as that agenda is still being pushed then you're kind of stuck right you're kind of science science as opposed to what see that's the thing science as opposed to god yes i mean as opposed to christ for sure well christ i mean yes so it's gotta be but that's what i'm saying here's i mean here's this here's this other thing though which is so this whole hegelian dialectic right (laughs) and if you guys are kind of picking up where i'm where i'm trying to head on that because thinking a lot about this too it's like It's not like it's exclusively just one side of the argument or the aisle, i.e. Wokies. It's not just, not just like, it's not just them, right? I mean, the thing with the, okay, let's not, let's like the vaccine is the symbol of the bigger issue. Because remember, remember Operation Warp Speed. That was Trump. And yeah. so we can't, we can't, like, you know, we got to try to stay true and trust, you know, seek this, this world, the middle road, the world path, right? I was speaking of the extremists. Sorry, I wasn't general yeah. over everyone. But, but I think the thing is, is I'm just, if I'm, if I'm just, I'm just stepping back and I'm just like, I, I think it's important. Well, I feel like I want to just zoom out real quick and just be like, well, that whole thing, I think is part of this potentially like this Hegelian dialectic of trying to put these two sides opposed to each other to to get this desired outcome. Do do you see what I'm saying? Because yet they're both, they're, they're two sides of the same coin is what you're saying, that they're both, they're both after the same thing. Correct. So maybe that's how all that stuff got lumped together. Correct. Because like, if you're Trumpist, then you're anti blah, 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 blah. And that's everything I stand for. So, right. And and so that's, that's when that's the huge problem, at least for us in this context right now. That's the huge problem is that you are forced to pick a side. Mm -hmm. And you're forced to say, this is this, therefore, I'm anti that. Or this is that, therefore I'm anti this. And I just want to say, because you know, to be true to our brand, tongue in cheek, we gotta really watch out for that. Cause that that's the trap. Mm-hmm. That that's the trap, right? Um Metropolitan Neophytus of Morfu, who's like this incredible confessor. Yeah. Right? Incredible confessor. He put out a video, gosh, probably six weeks ago, you know, but he was like, you know, he had gotten, he gotten sick, whatever, gotten COVID and he's like, okay, whatever, you know, it's like, I embrace it. I asked God to humble me. Speaking of which, not planned, right? Because I said earlier about how like, we have these saints who thank God for their illnesses, right? <laughs> Is it true, right? Yeah. St. Porfirio, St. Paisios, right? So you know, Metropolitan Neophytus of Morfu, this great confessor, he's like, he asked God to humble him and he got COVID. And he's like, I thank God that I got COVID. I thank God I got humbled, blah, 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 you know? And he came out after he was cleared, blah, blah, blah. And he was just like, you know what? I'm going to paraphrase, whatever. He's like, okay, you vaccinated people, you start praying for the unvaccinated. You unvaccinated people, you start praying for the vaccinated. There you go will solve the problem in the church, right? And, and I'm, I'm going there right now because where we're headed, there's not gonna be any other way but to approach it that way. Mm. Because if we don't, if we just make it be like, yeah, see so you dummies who fell for this and this and that, that's part of that, that's us playing into that dialectic, right? The only way for us to get out of that is to be like, you know what? If not for the grace of God, there go I. 
you know, let me, let me be, and I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm just saying like, this is, I, this is what I truly believe Christ is calling us to like, you don't, and this is, this is another thing. Help me not to get on too much of a rabbit trail, which this is another thing that the last few years have been really challenging us where it's just like, being merciful doesn't mean that you act like nothing happened, right? I don't, I don't need to act like, like if you don't see that there's a totalitarian agenda behind all this, how blind are you, right? But even deeper than that, if you don't see that there is demonic powers behind that quote unquote totalitarian agenda, and you're a believer, how blind are you, right? Well, here's the thing. What do we do with blind people? Well, we do our best to lead them, right? We, let's, let's do our best to help them to see. And so for me right now, I'm just like, you know what? Because there's, there's, there's people who are going to wake up to it. And I definitely not only need to be, but I wanna be someone who's there as, as, as a support. And I'm not trying to give you a warm and gushy, but a support and just be as Christ-like as I can be to someone who's like, you know what, man? Wow, I can't believe that happened, but like my eyes are open. You know what I mean? This because just, you, 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 you know what I'm saying? Cause I, Cause I know people this just happened to me. That's what I was. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut, but I just had to say this just happened to me where a guy I know that we had never really broached it, but I know that he did, um, you know, but um, we had never really broached it. He kind of even made some snide comments to me before. And then just recently kind of came up to me and told me, he's like, look, as you know, this happened and um, I'm, working on it he's you know in the church he's like i'm working on it i'm talking it out i'm kind of working through it kind of stuff and i was kind of shocked at how awesome that experience was because like there's this total like little drip of grace where i was like you know yeah of course like it's that part in fahrenheit 451 where he's like careful montag this was you yep. two weeks ago yep. like don't yep. get on your high horse now yep. you were them two weeks yep. ago so yep. Yeah. Take it easy. And and honestly, to me, that's the name of the game because, and again, forgive me, I, I hope I'm not cheesing too many people out, but like, that's why we really started this project was to be like, you know what, like, this is what's needed. Because I mean, clearly it isn't because, you know, I'm the most articulate guy in the world or, you know, whatever. It's like, this needs to happen because the one thing that we all see is that there's these extremes, this dialectic is what's killing everybody. And the, the only, what Christ is calling his people is come out of that foul city, my people. Come out of that foul city. And that foul city, that red versus blue, huh. that, that dialectic, that's the problem. You know what I'm saying? And there isn't anything that love can't cover. Love can cover a multitude of sin, but let's be clear when we say love though, right? That's see that and getting back to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. We're not talking about love is love. We're talking about love, like true love, like God is love and what that means. You know, the, the revelation of truth, self-accusation, like all of those things, humility, right? Like any, anyone who is willing to say, yeah, I was wrong on something and I'm really trying to work through it. I'm, I'm on your side, man. Mm -hmm. because because when i'm wrong and lord knows i'm wrong a lot and i'm going to be wrong on things i i want to i want to know that when i'm really sincerely wrong and i'm really sincerely wanting to change that people who quote unquote love me will help me like that's what it means to be a christian it's, it doesn't mean for us to be right being orthodox doesn't mean that you're right it means that you're able to repent <laughs> you're able to embrace and come to come to truth right because it's all revelation for us it's nothing that we own ourselves yeah or is of ourselves yeah this has been for me this, this I, I think this gets back to the 
the personhood aspect and the importance of the pursuit of a person as opposed to a pursuit of a Mm -hmm. thing like you brought up a structure or any of those types of types of ideas it's uh there's so like within the sort of sons of peterson and some of the stuff that i'm seeing of the like libertarians who are like in that libertarian to orthodox pipeline there's this blockage in there like oh almost all the way there and it has all everything to do with this person hood thing and like i'm seeing the the detour is to like some of these austrian economists like hans Hermann hoppe or like these sort of theorists like amensius molbug curtis yarvin what, whatever this la- this land oh. guy and and all of this all of these guys and it's interesting because there was a there there's a a dude who he, he's kind of perfect because he's a very sort of a, a, a populist kind of a, a, a thinker or whatever, but not a very deep thinker. And he just he had tweeted something where it was like, monarchy is is a much better system than democracy or something like that. Monarchy is much better than democracy. And I'm seeing this like, so there's this like king pilled thing. And I'm seeing these guys kind of go like, oh, yeah, mon- it's about this monarchy thing. And like, Christ is a king, so like that's good. And it's like, hold on, hold on. If pursuing monarchy doesn't help you, right? <laughs> like just the fact that it's a monarchy is right. not helpful because if you get a wicked king, that's like a lot worse than the mob right. rule. That's okay. Right. It's like if you're you don't need if you pursue Christ, like yes, Christ is the king, but it but like the idea of monarchy is like, he's beyond the idea of a monarchy. He is, he is the King. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you were to make a monarchy that was following him, then yes, that person would be following Christ, but it's like pursuing Christ. Then you don't even need to worry about what's the better system Mm -hmm. like monarchy or democracy, because the system that comes is the church. Mm -hmm. Right. Which was like another thing I hope that we could talk about is like, because people want the church because they want a an organization but like this this difference of organization versus organism right which we've talked about before right. and i right. think i think the more times we could possibly re- revisit that the better so so when we were talking about the culture the culture of the church the church being a meta culture like what is the church because these people are pursu- they are, they want to pursue an organization i think or a structure or something like that but it always feels wrong whenever I encounter people who are like, ooh, I, the Orthodox have it figured out because they organize themselves like X, Y, Z. And it just always feels very, that feels very wrong because I'm like, no, we're not organizing yeah. ourselves. The Holy Spirit's yeah. organizing us. Yeah, well, it's, what's funny is, and you know that's the case because all you have to do is just contrast us with like the Roman Catholic Church. Because the Roman Catholic Church is like, one thing you can say about them is they understand organization, they understand administration, right? And if you're a friend of Dostoevsky, you'll understand that's also part of the temptation that they, the temptation that the Lord passed, that's that's the one that they failed. That's what Dostoevsky is saying in The Grand Inquisitor. And you have to understand this understanding. This is so important because number one, I don't know. I, I just want to sincerely apologize to everyone because I just don't have the words. I'm not articulate enough to explain this experience, but all I can say is- Buy it in comic books, that usually works for me. Okay. It's fucking Daredevil. (laughs) So, so when, when we talk about experiencing the eschaton now, when we talk about experiencing the kingdom of God now, like it's not the flowery poetic language just for the sake of being you know fanciful or, or even trying to obfuscate something it's it, I, I mean i mean it as li- in, the, in as literal sense as possible listen today today in the gospel you know out of luke the pharisees asked the lord about you know the kingdom of god and he's like the kingdom of god does not come with observation hmm the kingdom of God does not come with observation. It's, it's within you. And this is so important because you know how important this is? This is how important this is. Everybody's eschatology is off because of this. 
right? Everyone's eschatology is off because of this. Everyone's understanding of the end times and, and how this all plays out in the book of Revelation, it's all off because everyone's looking for the kingdom of heaven in, in a way that's observed. And that, that's, no, no, no. If you don't understand that Christ has already been ruling and reigning at the hearts of his people, then your whole timeline is thrown off, right? You don't understand how late we actually are. That, that's, that's what this is about, right? And the thing is, is the, the reason why I can just say that is because like, I know that experience of having Christ ruling and reigning in my heart. I, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be completely given over to not just my passion, but to whatever the world was telling me at the time. And I know now what it's like to say no. And, and not easily, not, not, not just like, oh, no, like with a struggle, but nevertheless to say no, because I do have an actual king. I don't need to make up, you know, I'm not saying like Christ is the symbol for high organization. Like, yes, that's what Christ is. Yes, that's what the logos is. But Christ also is person and Christ is incarnated and revealed to us first and foremost through the icon. I mean, let, let's just get into it, right? Like when you look at an icon, you're looking at God, Jack. When you look at an icon of Jesus Christ, you're seeing God. Straight up, period, right? Literally God, right? And then from there, you move from the representation to the person, right? And the person of Christ leads you to the Father, you see in Christ, you see the Father. Like, that's how this works. And this becomes not some sort of, like, game you play, but in the life of the church, through stillness and prayer and confession, and primarily, first and foremost, the partaking of the, the sacraments, you begin to experience that in your life, really, in your inner life, in your heart, in your being, right? Right? you begin to experience something that isn't contingent upon your understanding. You begin to experience someone that isn't beholden to your thoughts, your passions, your proclivities, right? Your interests. That's the king. The one who says, I know that you like to drink to excess, watch a bunch of, you know, whatever, and do this and that. But if you're going to partake of me, right? Check this out. Hey, 25 year old guy who's looking for a better way to live life because you understand how bad modern society is and Western society and wokeism and all that stuff. Okay, great. You find orthodoxy. Well, here's this system. The Byzantines figured it out. They organize themselves through ethno, you know, ethno grouping and like whatever the, whatever the logic is for those people. I, I know the arguments, right? Yeah, let's be orthodox because they got it right. They got, they got a czar, they got a king, they're grouped by their ethnicity. That's the way to go, right? These, okay. Guess what? If it's real and you get in there, you know what's going to start happening? Those people, after a time, if you're really doing it, those people who you were stepping on, the kind of ladder of enemies, right? Your enemies are the rung of the ladder of you ascending into correctness. <laughs> you're actually following Christ. You're not going to be able to step on those rungs anymore. If you're actually encountering Christ, right? So that's what I mean, because before that you were all about it. You were all about vanquishing my foes, drinking the blood of the mongrels, whatever you were into, right? And so you just think, you know, I'm going to be part of the Varangian guard and like all this crazy stuff, whatever. But the thing is, is it doesn't really matter your fantasies about history and Byzantine history and Russian history and like blah, 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 because you're encountering the one who transcends all of it. And when you encounter him, he's going to tell you no, if you're actually encountering him, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not, and you're just a part of the Antichrist system, then I don't know what to tell you. Because let's just be clear, like I said last time, there's plenty of churches in the time of the Antichrist, capital T, capital A, there's going to be plenty of churches and cupolas. You're just not going to want to go there. Right? The Antichrist isn't going to shut down orthodoxy. He's going to, he's going to assimilate it in. 
he's going to bring it right in. Right. And that, so anyways, so that looking for the King, that's part of that dialectic that's setting it up. But they're looking for a King. They're not looking for the person of Christ. Correct. You know, they're like, let me, let me, and they're not, it's like, they're not even looking for a King. They're looking for a system Correct. that at its head would be a king and then somehow that's going to be better and it just right. seems let me just throw this at you too real quick just so we're clear what it is is still self because they're going to be looking for a king that personifies an idealization of themselves right or, right because they'll find a system you'll be like oh well here's a monarchy and they'll say oh no 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 but not that not that yeah. king though yeah. like right. it's i want the and one that's, that's the, basically yeah. I want the one that's me on, on steroids. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> DC. Well, that's the, that's the real communism has never been tried. You know, it's like, right. well, if I was, if I was Stalin, if that's I right. was the one in charge, it would be that's totally right. different. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. it is, it is very, it is very disheartening. Eh, maybe it's not disheartening, but yeah. it's at least, it's at least, it's at least, um, curious and at least and sometimes for me a bit annoying that well I mean, well maybe this is the question that i'm answering so so what is the approach clearly these individuals have decided to move in the path where christ is over here and they're hitting a detour mm -hmm. they're hitting a, a, a some sort of blockage in the road that's making them do this thing what is the besides pray, besides praying for them and maybe there is nothing besides praying for them but in encountering someone like that who then wants to speak to you about orthodoxy but they want to couch it in these terms how how do you speak to them how do you speak to them about orthodoxy how I mean, do you speak just, to them about the experience i mean i just think that like our our speech has to be has to be seasoned with salt and it's it's got to, the salt, the preservative is the spirit. And if you want to know about the spirit, you got to go to the spirit bears, which are the fathers. And the fathers are the one who bear the spirit in truth, right? And getting back to what we were talking about earlier, like they're the ones who hold the keys in the map. And, and that's why, you know, just don't, it, it's, there's some basic things that I want to encourage people in. Don't leapfrog, right? I've talked about this before. Like, most people probably shouldn't even really bother with Maximus. I'll just be really frank. Like Max, like I know by, that leapfrog, crazy. by leapfrogging, you mean start with more contemporary yes. fathers and yes. then you backwards. Yes, yes. Like it here. Here, here's the difference, right? Like I, I've known so many people who they'll read. You know, I and it's funny because I pick on Maximus a lot, and I read actually a lot of Maximus, right? So just so everyone knows, it's like, I, I, and I'm not some, I'm not anti-academic in that sense. I'm, I'm about, I'm about academic theology in its proper sense, which is the Orthodox way is we look to the fathers who are the spirit bearers who have experience. They have this empirical experience of God, of his energies his grace. That's how we do it. And then we look to the academic theologians to analyze and to kind of break it down for us sometimes and to help, right? So I know I, I go in hard on against the academics, but, but I'm talking really about this kind of scholasticism, which couches itself as academia. And scholasticism is this essentially confusing the rationalist approach with with the noose with the mind with with the spiritual experience do, do you see what i'm saying that's what i mean by scholasticism and when i go in on academics that's what i'm talking about people who who think that the chief expression and way of, in, of understanding god is through speculative rationalism right and there's plenty of people Log logical quote, argumentation correct, and all of that correct. Yeah. there's plenty of people who are, who are quote unquote orthodox who that's actually what they do and th that's incorrect. That's not the way, right? A, a, a good or or orthodox academic actually uses his education 
and the tools that his education has, has afforded him to help articulate the real experience, the ascetical experience of the fathers, right? It can't be separated from them. So I just need to get that clarification for people, right? So that being said, when you begin to really understand that Porfirios, Sophroni, I mean, Sophroni's, he's wonderful. Just, I mean, so wonderful. And he's so, he, I mean, Sophroni's on a whole other level, right? So, but like, uh, again, I just, I have some people who I just, I always go to, I always tell people, Elder Cleopa, St. Theophan the Recluse, St. Ignatius Brinachino, right? Um, St. Porfirio, St. Baisios, right? I mean, the, there's, they are the ones who live this Siloan, you know, reading Siloan. Um, they're the ones who have, they're men of our time and of our age, and they bridge that patristic time with our time for us. And they, 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 they're a gift that God gives to us that we aren't lost. They're the ones that tie us together to, to the ancients, right? So if you really want to understand St. Mark the Ascetic, St. Maximus, like if you really want to understand St. Hezekiel, you want to understand these people, you want to understand the fathers, you want to read, you know, whatever, you have to, you, you can't leapfrog the contemporary elders, right? And even contemporary academic theologians, Father John Romanides, right? Father uh, Dimitri Stanleyan, right? Um, there's modern confessors, forgive me for just name dropping. I'm just, I'm hoping people will pick some of this stuff up. Father George Calciu, Father Roman Braga, like they're these, they're these, these holy men and elders who have, they are firmly um, soaking in the patristic light but they're also incredible scholars who use that to articulate the living experience. That's the difference, right? And when you do that, then that fuels your ability to enter into whatever prayer rule your parish priest is giving you, right? Whatever practice of confession and, and liturgical life you're able to participate in, you need the fathers to flesh that out for you. Does that, does that make sense what I'm saying? No, it's like it's handed down from the mountain. It's, it's like down. it's the relay race. Yes, that's one hundred percent of what it is because the knowledge is given, made sure that it's given to the appropriate level at the appropriate time, so it can finally get to this guy, right. and this guy can finally find it digestible. And remember, you just said something. The you said it correctly. God bless you. You said knowledge, not information. Right? Knowledge is given. What is the knowledge that they're handing to us? They're handing to us the information that's been developed, purified. So however you wanna look at it through experience, that's why it's actual knowledge mm -hmm. because they've, they've taken information and, they've, and it's, it's been processed through experience, right? That's, that's what you receive when in the Orthodox tradition, as opposed to, to be frank, you know, with, in all charity, the Roman Catholic tradition, the Protestant tradition, which is on the one hand, just pure speculative, just, just, it's not pure, mostly speculative, right? Yeah. And on the other hand, moralism, right? Protestantism is moralism, Roman Catholicism is speculative reasoning and logic, right? Orthodoxy is the living experience of the grace of God, his energies, right? That, that's the difference. And to get back to your talking about that it's the same that it's the same church, that it's the same, that because God hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And it's just that although the revelation, if we're, if we're speaking to, with the modern fathers and they're speaking in a, if we're reading the modern fathers and they're speaking with a voice that we can understand maybe better than an ancient father, it's not that they're relaying to us a different Holy Spirit. It's that they're relaying it to us in the language that we could understand. Do I, do I have that right? Yeah. I mean, that's why St. Porfirio says spiritual television. I mean, mm -hmm. we could understand that a little bit more is to be like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I know what that is. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and I just want to say it's so important because it's easy for an outsider to come in and just be like, 
talked a little bit about this last week of just like, well, is it kind of disingenuous for me to just convert to this and that? Because really, I'm a Western this and that's like, you know, the fathers, they didn't set out to um, make culture, right? Like they didn't set out to be like, like, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to make a culture, I'm going to make a this, we're going to make a that. It's they hadn't, they had experience of God's energies, uh, God's uncreated energies. They had experience of it and they used created means to articulate that experience to us. They would use Greek culture. They used Roman culture. They used whatever culture to express their experience, right? But they didn't, it, it, that wasn't, that wasn't what they set out to do. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? The, so that was the, that, that was the lexicography. That was the tools that they had to work with. Correct. So that was correct. And that's so important because that's why the whole business, someone's going to hunt me down for this one for sure. But God allowed Byzantium to fall for a reason, for a reason, right? he the spirit of the this <laughs> what made byzantium byzantium quote unquote right what, what made the eastern roman empire what it was is that that exact thing of this experience of god and the articulation of god through these means but when it fell orthodoxy didn't fall true orthodoxy didn't fall and that's why you can be in a parish in midtown Kansas City, and you can authentically experience something of, of quote unquote Byzantium, of quote unquote Holy Russia, of quote unquote whatever, because all those are, those are the prisons of which this uncreated light has filtered through. And we are just one more of those prisms. We are just one more of those stained glasses. The thing is, is the light, right? The light is of the light and we, the light is of the light and we see it in the light. Like that's, that's the thing, right? And so it's not created. The, the accidents of history of the Eastern Roman Empire, that's created, right? The grace of God that gave it energy and gave it life, that's not created. Mm -hmm. That, that's, do, do you see the difference, right? Yeah. And the other thing that I'll say uh, is that those guys that you're talking about, Cyprian, that are maybe in a pit stop on their road and they're kind of just hanging out there for a little bit longer than they should be, is I was one of those guys. And I'm sure we all were to some degree. And I even um, had those same thoughts of, well, every man needs a religion. So I'm going to do this one because I like this one. So, and then Christ still was able to work with that. So I'm sure someone was just praying for me. So that it worked for me. So it could probably work for most people. Mark, maybe not. Who knows? We'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, Speaking of time telling. Nice. I, that was a we're, very seamless I, transition. I think we're I think we're on it. Very professional. About two hours. Very very professional. Um. <laughs> so uh, I don't. The question I have, and I don't want it to be too exclusionary. So, but I someone asked me this a long time. No, someone did not ask me this. No one would ask me this. <laughs> I'm the only person who would ask this of other people. But I heard it on a podcast is if you guys could reach into either the DC or the Marvel comic book universe and take okay. one item out and make it real and you could hang out with it, what would it be? Because An item or a person? An item. In this case, an item. You could do person too if you wanted. Either one? Either, either one. one. Yeah. I mean, mine's going to be cap shield. Like, I want cap shield. It's just... I mean, mine feels, mine feels too obvious. Mine and feels too obvious. It. Huh? Infinity no. Gauntlet? No. Green Lantern's ring. Come on, man. Ooh. Come on, man. I don't have the will for it. Come on, man. <laughs> That's the one. Ooh. No. I don't have Green Lantern's will. I don't have Hal Jordan. 
It's one of the reasons that, I don't. Really that's like it, Gotham. bro. That's the that's the one of all of them. That's the one. No. You know what, Cyprian? I can totally see you in a lantern too. You're definitely a lantern guy. Yeah. Oh, Green Lantern for sure. Yeah. For sure, yeah. man. Like the Green yeah. Lantern. Yes, yeah. absolutely. If I'm part of the Ring Corps, I'm the blue. I'm the blue. Okay, fair enough. Hope. Fair enough. I would definitely be Hope. Fair I, enough. If I'm being, you know, nice about myself, there's also avarice and fear. So I might be a little bit more towards the avarice or fear side mm. or mm-hmm. the rage. But I don't have the will to be a Green Lantern. I'd be like, eh, that's fine. No, I'm not. Su- no, you just said to bring the item out. You didn't tell me that I had to actually be a lantern. Right. I didn't say right. I would choose no, 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 to be no. a green lantern. I said well, I, I would choose I to hang still... out with the rig for a little you while. You see how to hang out the ring, man. That's all I'm saying. I mean, but <laughs> I, the ring. I can I can get you a green lantern ring, no problem. No, and not the work. not the ring. Not the ring. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> Who are you to tell me that's not the ring? I'm just saying maybe I maybe I've got my ways, but I could toss around the shield for a while and there you go. Be cool. Father, what do you got? Oh, man. Uh, I think it would be for me. It's going to be scandalous, but I think it'd be the Eye of Agamotto. Really? Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I was kind of scared. That's just as good. That's just as good. I was kind of scared because I was like, well, then there's also like the ultimate nullifier and the ultimate nullifiers. I could start a person over in a new life. And so like, if a person was suffering, then I could just run them through the ultimate nullifier or, you know, like take down. I mean, then I hold, you know, more power, whatever, whatever. But I was like, yeah, I think I'd have to go something smaller, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. It's a tough one. There's there's a few there's a few I've got in mind yeah. there's a few I mean, I've got in mind that are pretty always cool. the Batmobile I well of course that's that's going to be in top three that's going to be top three for sure or just yeah. having a utility belt in general I guess utility belt would be I think the whole it's just the whole bat thing like if you could just have the bat cave mobile yeah. you got it all all of that but that's not one item no. but it, it's a it's a set it's an item set. <laughs> <It's a set. laughs> All right, if you could hang out for the afternoon with a person from Marvel or DC, who would it be? And the temptation for me is to say Cap, but... Wouldn't be interesting to hang out with, I don't think. No, he'd be incredibly interesting. The problem is it's the same problem I would have with hanging out with a holy person to a degree. Holy person would be a different experience, but I'd be feeling very shameful about myself compared to Captain America. As I was like... You know, anytime I would just be like, I'm tired. He'd be like, son, you don't need to be tired. How about we go for like a three mile run really quick? And I'm like, that'll get the blood going. I'm like, okay, this is fine. This is fine. And like Bruce Wayne, sure, that would be cool. But then even then, that would be tiring after a while. Like an afternoon of like him, like, he's like, oh. Rooting. Huh? Rooting, yeah, one hundred percent, and it's just like he'd probably figure something out that I didn't want figured out. I'm like, I'm cool with that being a mystery. Thank you. So I'm tempted to say something like Galactus. Then I could just hang out with Galactus. He wouldn't even notice oh, me. Oh, that's. I would just like sit on his shoulder for a while and probably talk with Silver Surfer, and then, I mean, but who am I kidding? It'd be Captain America. I, mean, <laughs> I would just take the feelings of shame just to hang out with Captain America for like an afternoon. So. I'm gonna, right. say for, I'm gonna say Professor X. Oh, he'd be cool. I'm gonna hang around the mansion. You're we're cool. Gonna ha- we're gonna have some scotch. We're gonna have some scotch, and we're just gonna. He's just gonna break it down for me. He's Those gonna inhibitions are gonna go away, though. And at a certain point, uh-huh. you know he's gonna probe your mind a little bit. Right. Dude. Well, that, <laughs> I don't know yeah. if I'm comfortable with that. I, I gotta go with Logan. Really? A bunch yeah. of mutant lovers. He mm-hmm. could tell you some stories. He could tell you some stories for sure. Yeah. What yeah, lo- you know, I've, I've always had this. I've always had this sense where, if you can get past a certain, you know, half hour, two hours with 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 Logan, that he would be pretty mm-hmm. well guided. Like, 
he just seems like one of those cats who'd be up for whatever you got going on. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> <coughs> um, what phase of Logan are we talking about? Talking old Wizen Logan, like Japan Logan, early on Logan. Not early on Logan. Not like earliest Wolverine. Yeah, not not, not, not super like berserker, like I can't no. control myself, like whatever, Logan. Um, but even like I know Kitty Pride. Kitty mm-hmm. Pride Logan, Madripoor okay. Logan. Yeah, the Madripoor Logan mm-hmm. with the eye patch yeah. and the white suit. Like, yes, mm-hmm. I'd be down yeah. for that. I'd you be know. down for that. But um, I think that's, I think we've got all the mileage we can out of Ooh. this. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Okay, all right. Let me ask this one last question. <gasps> you Waffles. could be, what's that, Father? Waffles. Waffles. <laughs> Um, if you could be a fly on the wall for any major, and I don't know, again, maybe this is too broad or maybe too exclusive. I'm sorry. Cause I don't know how into the world you are as Supreme, mm-hmm. but if you could hang I'm out, pretty, I'm pretty in, uh, in a comic book event, what would you hang out? We're talking like one of the big cataclysmic events, something, something kind of shook things, you know, your infinite crises or your civil wars or your secret invasions. I think Superman doomsday. You'd hang out for Doomsday. Yeah. 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 Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That would be... We're trying to actually... Okay, I got to think about that later. I'm going to process that later. Because, yeah, that would be difficult. That would be difficult. I love Superman so much. I would hate to mm-hmm. see him die. That would be very, very difficult for me. What about you, Father? Um... I think maybe the first Secret Wars. Ah, oh, dang it, that was mine. Because that's really? the whole point of Secret Wars in the first place, is yeah. that you're just supposed to be hanging out with a bunch of cool super superheroes and supervillains who are fighting each other. Yeah. Uh, then I got nothing. I would hang out and I would you know what I would hang out for? I would hang out for the fight. I would hang out for the fight between Superman versus Batman and Dark Knight Returns. That's a great like, one. I would absolutely hang out with hang out in there or between him and fighting the mutant leader when they're in that pool, when they're in that mud pool, I would be like, yeah, I, I will hang out for that. Or crisis on infinite earths would be really, really cool. Too. Just real quick. I hate to do it. Cause like, whatever, I just go, you know, one that like, I, it had a real impact on me. I, I still kind of don't know why maybe it was the age, my age, whatever, but well, there's two things. Um, uh, when hell just messes up Thor, I remember reading that run and just being like, "Whoa, this is wild." Walt he grew Simonson, up, yeah, Walt yeah, Simonson man was the scratches man. up his face when oh. he grew when he grew his beard out. That was like, yeah. but but the other thing is, it, it always an impact on me was that that mutant massacre. I don't know if you know about the mutant massacre, mm. but the mutant massacre. Um, this is the time when X Factor just started, mm. and this is like the first real cataclysmic event in the X-Men uh, universe. And basically this is where Angel gets his wings mm-hmm. um, destroyed. He mm-hmm. becomes Archangel. And this is like the kind of advent of apocalypse. Mm-hmm. And basically these, the mutant hunters come and they just waste all these like mutants. It, it was wild. Just I remember reading this, this is like the first time seeing like major characters be like thrashed and killed and that was wild that was really really wild yeah in fact andrew you especially i know like that's something you should probably talk to judah and get a copy from him on that because that that was a real impactful impactful and that's where, where apocalypse comes out of and all that stuff so i'm going to i've had a long i've never really cared about the x-men too much yeah. But I'm going to set that aside. Um, you know, while well, I'm say this on the air, why not? I don't care. Uh, I turns out Walt Simonson did a, a short run on uh, of Orion from the New Gods. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm reading the collection right now. I've never heard of it. I totally stumbled on it by accident. I was like, "No, he writes too." Did you know that? Walt Simon, that's like his. That's his two four man. Is is that he writes the story and then he draws the pictures. Yeah, he's, he's great, man. Amazing. Walt Simonson, awesome. the dude, he's like, 
invented Beta Ray Bill, which is yep. like one of the greatest yep. Marvel characters. I would want to hang out with Beta Ray Bill so hard because yep. he's just like just the coolest dude. Anyway, I'm sorry. And he looks like a horse. And that's really <laughs> cool. Um, but uh he did this run, and but part of the collection I got was this. Uh, I'm sure it's been years and years since you've read it, Father, but that they're calling it a question that Orion is actually Darkseid's son mm -hmm. uh, because Tigra or Tigra, I don't know how to say her name, uh, might have had an affair. And so, uh, but they're telling this story and it's like three page and I just, I should just bring it to you, Father, but Frank Miller draws it. And it's oh, a story of her giving birth to Orion. And it's like these words, it's just like, um, she didn't scream once while she was giving birth, but she grunted once. And when Orion came out, he didn't cry. He roared. And it's like three pages long. And the art is so, because she's like giving birth in this like dark chamber surrounded. By, oh man, it's done only in a way that Frank Miller can do it. And it's so, there's like nothing. Because then Dark Side at the very end just shows up and just like snatches Orion and just walks away. He's like, you'll never see the sun ever again. And I'm just like, oh, man. dude, I mean, I would actually probably hang out with Dark Side too. Just because, again, he probably wouldn't even notice me. He would just stand there, like, with his arms behind his back. And I would be like, this is cool, I guess. I mean, <laughs> which is not that bad. I don't know why, but. <laughs> but anyway. All right. All right. That's all I got. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, so we still have the email. Yep. Page, landing it's, it's page. there it's there we've got some people so uh i guess we'll have to start sending some things out to these people because we've got a list now going but please people uh get on that list and we're going to send some stuff out um and yeah again feel free to reach out uh i know that we did last week but we are trying if i see something in the youtube section or in youtube in the comment section i try and bring it up like if i feel like it's a question that we really should be asking so feel free to ask questions there and, you know, if it's something that I think we can tackle or, you know, do it justice, then we'll talk about it. But thank you. And then, yeah, I don't have anything. So have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.